when we get to this time in life. You're so thankful for the little things. Everybody should have dignity from the womb to the tomb, but you know what I mean? It's our legacy uh, while, while we're here to take care of the people who took care of us. Adult Protective Services is a service within Henrico County Social Services and we have eight uh, staff people who actually go out and visit people in their homes when you would say they may be in a crisis situation. Adult Protective Services is for a person who is experiencing either abuse, neglect, or exploitation financially and they need someone to help uh, intervene and offer options so that the issues can be resolved and they can move on and, and feel safer. It's usually people who are at risk and that's why we're there. But we're there for a short period of time to offer services to help coordinate between family members and services within the community. And um, uh, it's, it's been extremely helpful to a lot of people in the county when they don't know where to turn and they feel overwhelmed. Over 60% of our cases that we work on each month are self-neglect, which refers to individuals who have become isolated, perhaps lonely, um, confused, uh, aren't following up on medical needs, and um, perhaps mixing up medications, a number of different reasons that someone would find themselves um, self-neglecting, and we can help there as well and do, with, with over 60% of our cases being self-neglect. On our way to a screening for an assisted living facility, auxiliary grant. We do two types of screenings. One type is for the auxiliary grant for assisted living facilities, and we do the second type for personal care and nursing home screenings for services. Without the screening, they would not get the benefit and they wouldn't be able to live in certain situations. Okay, so we're just going to go over your reassessment. Any therapy that you're receiving right now? No. Yeah. Okay. And everything's still going okay here? Yes. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Know That's good. Okay. I have here that your power of attorney is still your, ma your main contact. The second contact will be her son because if he's, he's 30 years old now, so. Oh, okay. I figured in case she's, in case she's unable or at the time, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's important because you wouldn't know what your rights and responsibility, well, they'll read you your rights and so forth, so you know basically, but you don't know what your rights are when it comes to other things, like the right to having cer certain kinds of services. And if you didn't talk to the social worker, you would not know. And I think a lot of people that are living in society, they don't know where to go or who to go to or if they have any rights at all. By checking to make sure that um, all of my needs were being met, asking me the questions. I mean, I might forget to say something, but the questions help. They're on this earth, and we want to make sure that they're taken care of. And when they do not get the things that they need, um, you know, they're left out there and have to, you know, uh, pretty much go somewhere else to try to get it, and sometimes those needs are not being met. And um, when we step in the picture, we want to make sure that they're getting everything they need. And we appreciate our seniors, um, and we want to make sure they're happy. And it's a fulfillment for us as well. You feel like you, you will have what you need if you need it, or they'll help you to get it in some way. Everything looks good. You look great. You're taking care of yourself. I, I can tell good. that. Yeah, yeah. Doctor's so. always pleased with my blood pressure. I, that seems to keep where it should be. Good, yeah. stable. That's yeah. what we like to hear. We all like
like to be in control of our lives. I think from the very beginning, we, that's one of the things that just seems like something we enjoy is to be able to make our own decisions, um, be in control of our future, our own destiny. And what we try to do with individuals when we work with families and individuals is to continually express that they are the ones that should be making decisions about their future and we're there to assist them. So the fear should not be there that somebody's gonna come in and make decisions for you. People like to be in their own home, in their own situation, um, decide when they want to eat and when they want to go to bed and they don't want to go into you know, assisted living where they have to eat certain meals and they have to go at certain times. Um, and they, people, most of the people that we deal with um, want to stay in their own homes. I like being in my own apartment so I can do things for myself. In this case, um, Ms. Andrews was living in a housing situation that was not appropriate for her. And she had a hard time staying there because she didn't have the post office or the mailbox close to her. She didn't have uh, the laundry um, next to her. And so she was having a difficult time walking to those different places. So we looked and looked for a place for her and she had applied for a Section 8 housing in Richmond City and she was on a list for oh, I don't know, about six or seven years. Her name finally came up, and she was able to get a Section 8 voucher to find her own place. And so she chose this place, and she seems real happy now. I'm very thankful for the help I'm getting, very thankful. People feel like that they've worked all their lives, they've paid their taxes, and now they're not able to do things for other people. They, they always gave to different organizations, and now they don't have the money to even take care of themselves. So. Um, Henrico Social Services um, does have resources, and we have resources in Henrico County, and it really has helped the individuals um, to live in their own homes. And one of this program for personal care is to prevent someone to go into a nursing home. So um, Ms. Andrews is able to stay in her own home instead of having to go into a nursing home because we have these services. It's very nice to have someone, that, if you have a problem, to get in touch with. Very nice. We receive a call from the community saying that um, a person may not be going to the doctor's office or may not be getting any meals and it's very isolated. Maybe their relatives or friends aren't coming to see them. Now in this particular situation, um, Ms. Standridge needed some help in the home with um, light housekeeping, meal preparation, and we were able to give her 10 to 20 hours per week of companion services. And um, that worked out real well, except she eventually needed some more services. So now she's on personal care with the Medicaid services. And so now she's receiving about four or five hours a day of personal care in the home. Do you have any bills or anything that you need for me to call about? Remember that St. Mary's bill that you had? This bill ain't been paid, right? Right, that bill's not been paid. I worried a lot until I moved over here. I don't have to worry now. It's great to have to know that someone cares. Well, I think sometimes there's a misconception that if you come to us at Henrico County Social Services that we have housing, that we have um, transportation, when in essence what we really have is a great knowledge of community resources and with that we link individuals to housing and transportation services, for example, out in the community. So it, we do a lot with information and referral, but we also coordinate setting up those services for people, uh, monitoring to make sure that they really do work out. And um, we, with each person, we have a service plan, for example. And within that service plan, we have particular goals and objectives so that that person can feel safe again and no longer at risk. And these community supportive services help them live independently or help them live um, maybe with some help but continue their independence even though they might have some dependencies that they need help with. Senior Connections is the Area Agency on Aging and they cover our area and have quite a few um, services that they provide to the elderly um, and we are able to work with them when we come across an individual that we know uh, really has a number of needs and they do the same if they um, 
uh, someone's referred to Senior Connections and they want our help. We work together, we coordinate. Senior Connections does a lot of things. We are one of the, I believe, 26 area agencies on aging in the state of Virginia. And the services that we offer are designed to keep um, seniors over 60 in their homes so they can age in the community. So how are things going with your bill payers? So he's still helping you once a month pay your bills? He pay the bills. Right. He write the bills. Well, he I writes the checks. checks. Exactly. I, <laughs> right. It's still your money, but he's writing out your checks for you. I love Henrico Social Services. I feel so blessed to be working with such a great group of people. I can call them, even if it's not like an official complaint, you know, a referral that I have for them, just call one of the social workers, get their input, and they can say, yeah, go ahead and call that in, or just get some input from them. And when I do call in, you know, a, that I'm concerned about a client, they follow up on it right away. Do you feel like you're somebody? Because you're at home by yourself. You don't have nobody to talk to. Sometimes somebody come and visit you and ask you a whole lot of questions, how you feel, this, that, and the other. Six, seven. The Friendship Cafes are just wonderful. There are four in Henrico County. They meet various days and times. They go, they have a hot lunch, they have different activities. And just, I swear it's like going into a junior high cafeteria because just the dynamics, you know, they sit at little tables and they all kind of have their own personality, but again, that gets them out of the house. It keeps them active. We have transportation, and they just thrive there. They really do. They're great programs, so we'd love to see more folks come out to the Friendship Cafes. Well, you go crazy if you stay at home by yourself all the time. You talk, be talking to yourself. Over here, we can talk to each other, <laughs> tell our troubles. I found that uh, all the gifts that I have in me I've been able to share with other people and it's been such a blessing when I see them happier. Six, seven. I must like it because I keep coming. It's very, very interesting for anybody that's single and don't have anything to do at home. We take exercise seven. and we do all kind of puzzles. They keep us busy, busy, busy. That's what we do. I'm very grateful to find Senior Connections. Because not only do we fellowship, they take care of us, they feed us, and, and uh, all this is very precious. And see, when you get this old, you're so thankful for the little things. Four. PACE program, that's something new, um, relatively new. It's um, innovative, it's like a one-stop shopping. and. They have uh, a center where adults can go, elderly can go um, every day if they'd like. At that one place, they have um, staff, not only social workers, but nurses and doctors, and their goal is to avoid someone going into a nursing home prematurely. I just like it because it's somewhere to could leave, could leave home because, see, I live alone because I don't want nobody in the house with me. I live by myself and I come over here, I have a good time with the girls. Through Henrico County, we're able to identify people who will qualify for the program and have a better quality of life. Ninety years old and they don't believe it. I don't care who know I'm old. This is a nice place to go and it's, and it's nice people that waits on you, the people that work here, and it's nice people that you can meet and, and talk to and make you feel good. Meals on Wheels is a, a great resource for our seniors and disabled people. I had a, a lady who we learned uh, that uh, she had some lab work done and she was anemic. And, and I, I mentioned that she, there's two kittens out, that she's caring for outside her home. And, and I said, and can you provide some kitten food? Because I know that she needs uh, some help with that too. And, and so Meals on Wheels is a, a great resource. They also um, provide a benefit for our seniors and disabled who have pets and may need some help with paying for uh, the, the food for them. We're really there to help. We're there, there to, to learn what's going on, to offer services. And you know we have, uh, within all the um, 
social workers in our unit, we're able to link people to community services and we know the landscape of resources. Even though probably 95% of seniors are being cared for by family members if they need it, um, the day-to-day -day needs when you do have a chronic illness or you know you are on a number of medications um, you know become burdensome not only for the individual but for the family. We began to notice some um, problems with Judy as far as memory and behavior and after much delving into it and, and services from Henrico County and so forth we finally got a diagnosis of uh, dementia, a rare type of dementia. She's Donnie's sister, and of course has been a part of our lives, and uh, it just seemed like the most natural thing to take her into our home. If it's a sacrifice for me, or my wife, or my family, or her family, we just have to do it because they're family and you want them to live the way you want to live. In the beginning, uh, we used Henrico um, Social Services as a, a resource. We needed their help to try and determine what was best for Judy and to eventually get a diagnosis for her. It's very difficult. Uh, there's a lot of feelings involved, um, a lot of camaraderie as well. Uh, we have to work together. We have to mesh our schedules and um, just all for the best interest of Judy. The one person can't take care of a person with dementia because you don't, you're not prepared for it. What you ex expect is normal today is not there tomorrow. So you can't be prepared, that's why you need help. So try to do it, do it as a family, and when you get burnt out, ask for help because you're not helping her if you're burnt out. I don't know where I'd be. Mm. Might have been in a homeless shelter. <laughs> there is a growing um, phenomena where we have uh, seniors raising their own grandchildren. That's not only here in our county, but nationwide. And to meet that need, we have developed a grandparent support group. Um, they've been meeting for quite a few years now and provide support to each other. Uh, in terms of dealing with anywhere from babies to teenagers um, and, and responding to that in older age and, and uh, they've really given each other uh, the ability to talk about some of the problems that they're experiencing along with being older uh, but they're really providing a wonderful um, service obviously to grandparents, grandchildren that they love. A lot of seniors are uh, basically empty nesters, uh, all their, their family, their children, everybody has basically moved out and uh, they're home and isolated alone. Sometimes they have health issues, disabilities that keep them from traveling out of the house uh, and therefore they become excellent victims or, or, or prey for the predators uh, trying to pull scams and, and, and any type of uh, financial theft from them. Somebody called me about a credit card and I don't forgot what she, all this story she told me and said, what is your social security number? I would want to check to see if we have it right. And I got up and went to my pocketbook. I said, what am I doing? The first thing would be to call the police. Second thing would be to safeguard themselves. Once again, um, try not to invite anybody into your, ho your home. Uh, if somebody comes to your door looking to do work on your property or, or wanting to help you refinance or mortgage, you know, remortgage your house or something like that, um, most reputable companies will not do that. They'll send advertisements, sure. They might put flyers on your mailbox, sure. But most people are not going to go door to door knocking and, and just hitting the elderly people of the neighborhood. That's usually a, a pretty good sign that it's a scam. Don't freely give out your information. Don't freely give out your checking account uh, or write checks and don't freely of course give your credit card number. I know our Henrico County Police Department with their Economic Crimes Unit um, is doing a good job in, in trying to respond to the exploitation that goes on 
anyone who experiences it or a family member can make a police report and they will um, investigate any kind of fraud or abuse. Um, and we work with them and work on cases together. In 2030, there'll be one in four people will be elderly. So, um, you know, it's something that's going to happen to us all. And so whatever we do for the elderly today, we're doing for ourselves tomorrow. We go back in the long run. We've got a problem. We go back to granddad and dad and mom to find out what's going on. And I think that the basic qualities in life are living, doing to others you doing that you'd like to be done unto. And the golden rule has always been a good one. We got here as a county because of the people who came before us. So that in itself, I think, requires some respect, some dignity, and some recognition of the contributions that people have made. And we're a county that supports people with programs such as we've talked about so that they can continue to make a contribution and be actively involved and feel that Henrico County is a good place to live. We are here to have relationships with people and to help each other because there's a time for all of us in life when we take care of someone and then there's a time when it's time for someone to take care of us.